Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to finish up our little in-depth look at the design of the slide rule and how the scales interact. Today we're going to have a look at the trigonometric scales, so let's get right to it. Now by now you're relatively familiar with the trigonometric scales. On the Picket N3, they are on the slide. On the Faber-Castell 283, they're actually on the body of the slide, and there's an extra one here called a P-scale. But let's go ahead and just have a quick look at this and see how they're built and why. So let's start off with a very familiar one here and that is the sine scale. But one thing I want you to notice is that there is a minimum value to the angle on the sine scale and that minimum value is 5.7 degrees. There's also a maximum value. So if you come out here on the sine scale, you're pretty much going to get lost in the dust here once you get to about 84.3 degrees. And the sine values increase as you go from left to right, whereas the cosine values increase as you go from right to left. Because basically one is 90 degrees minus the other. Now the tangent function is a little bit different here. Notice that we have two tangent scales. The first tangent scale goes from 5.7, and then it comes up to 45. And then it goes from 45 up to about 84.3. Well, the reason for that is to help you place your decimal place. So for sine and cosine, for values of 5.7 to 84.3 degrees, the value is going to be 0.xxx. Now just to give you an idea of where we're going with this, if you have a sine and a cosine value between 0.57 to 5.7, the value of your sine and cosine are going to be 0.0xxx. And obviously if it's below this, it's going to be even lower. Now the tangent on the other hand, if you start with a tangent of 5.7 and go to 45, your tangent value will be 0.1 to 1.0. Whereas if you go from 45 to 84.3, your tangent value will go from 1.0 to 10. If you come down to the C and the D scale at 4, that means that the tangent of about 21.8 is going to be 0.4. However, the tangent of 77 degrees is going to be 4. Well, what about the other angles? What about the small angles, for example, between 0 and 5.7? How do we figure those out? It's actually going to be between 0.57 and 5.7. And we're going to do something called the small angle approximation. Okay, what the small angle approximation says is that for small angles between, say, 0 and 5.7 degrees, the sine will equal the tangent equals the number of radians in that number of degrees, and one radian is 57.3 degrees. So let's look at the, let's look at four degrees. So what we would do is we would take four, and we're going to divide it by 57.3. Now on most slide rules, including this one, you'll see that there's a little r right here, and that is the, the gauge mark for radians. So we just come right to that. Now according to this, the sine is going to be 6.98. So what 6.98 what? Well, it's going to be 0 0.0698. Now let's go see what the actual sine of that is going to be. Now according to the new Fangle electronic calculator, the sine of 4 degrees equals 0 0.069756. Now there is a slight difference in precision there, but again, give me an example where that's going to make a difference in a calculation in real life. Now while it's very important to understand this relationship that the sine, the tangent, and the radians equal each other for small angles, we actually have a scale on the slide rule that handles that, and that is called the ST, or the SRT scale. So this is the small angle sine tangent scale or the sine radian tangent scale. So if we want to look at the sine or the tangent of 4 degrees, we just come out to 4 degrees on the ST scale and then read straight up to both the sine and the tangent. And once again, if you're using the straight sine or the tangent scales, your form 
is going to be sine cosine equals 0 0.xxx. If you're using the ST scale, your sine is and tangent is 0.0xxx. So you would read this out as just shy of 0.07. And again, we're at 0.0698. So it's, you can't really tell the difference here. But if you divide it out, you see you get a little more accurate result. But in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you give me a quick follow for more slide rule information and an upcoming trig course. Take care, guys.